the Cévennes National Park, France. For the first time in almost half a century, griffin and vultures fly freely and safely in the Massif Central. That they do is thanks almost entirely to the efforts of this man, Michel Terrasse from France. Although a chemist specialized in chemical biology, he spent much of his life devoted to the preservation of birds of prey. And with his brother, Jean-Francois, among others, he's founded an association to rehabilitate and reintroduce them to this part of France. For us, the reintroduction of vultures was a step to build a complete community with wild animals undisturbed by man. Why protect an old church? Why to like, for instance, beautiful music from Chopin? And why let the vultures and eagles disappear in the sky of France or other parts of Europe? For us, it's the same way. It is a protection of an heritage we received from our parents, and we have the duty to give quite untouched to our son, to our daughter. Vultures have lived in this region for upwards of two million years. But in the 1920s and 30s, they were systematically destroyed by hunters and poisoners. In 1967, Terrasse and his team began the painstaking task of bringing them back. To obtain breeding stock, they sought help from private zoos in France. Other birds were donated by Spanish wildlife authorities. These vultures are just coming from Spain. We received them the last, uh, the last six months, and we hope they, uh, they will be released in the next uh, weeks or months, just after the, the, the end of winter. Griffin vultures are the largest flying birds in the world. Fully grown, they have a wingspan of around 2 meters 80 and weigh anything up to 9 kilos. They may appear intimidating, but in reality, they're harmless to any living being. Unlike eagles, with whom they're often linked, vultures don't have talons. They're not killers. They only eat carrion. And this makes them an important link in the food chain. It also means they're useful removing potential disease in dead animals which in turn saves farmers the time-consuming job of burying their dead livestock. To convince the public that vultures should be protected, Terrasse's group hold meetings, run films, and uniquely publish a comic for children. But despite the publicity, it wasn't until 1981, 14 years after the program started, that the first birds could be released with any confidence. To monitor their progress, each vulture has a transmitter with its own frequency implanted in its tail feathers. 30 months on, the project's well established, but Michel has vivid memories of their first release. The weather was very bad. It was in December, uh, 1981, and the vulture fall down in the valley and learn during one month to, to, to soar, to fly like a true vulture. Some of these vultures were captive since 10 years in zoos and they had many, many things to learn. Only three months after the first release of the vultures, we had a baby in a nest in a cliff and the second year, we have a second chick. Last spring, we, we had the luck to see a new vulture, completely new and wild, without any ring in the feet, coming back with another vulture, a, a captive vulture. And it was for us uh, the best news we, we, we ever had with this project. 
At the last count, there were 30 vultures living in this region. Clearly, the experiment, which is being watched by conservationists around the world, is a success. And it seems likely that others will soon follow Terrasse's example. There is a big problem in California with the California condor. He's one of the biggest birds in the, in the world, but uh, the rarest in the world, uh, with only 20 birds alive in the wild. And people in California uh, try to, to learn uh, through our experience how to, to save their uh, California condor. Meantime, Terras and his colleagues have more work of their own to do. And the Rolex award, which is 50,000 Swiss francs, and a gold Rolex chronometer, will help see them through. So that by 1990, when they hope to have finished, griffin vultures will be fully restored to the community where nature intended. For us, it's, it's fantastic. This experience is one, perhaps, of the best uh, moment of our life. But for us, uh, not only vultures are flying, are flying completely free in this region, but in this region people are now much more concerned by the protection of the wildlife because we, we have made uh, so much effort to, to, to help them to welcome the vultures that now people welcome sometimes all the wildlife. 